Yes. So uh, we are recording now. I think uh, we'll start the class. So before I uh, before I start, let me just uh, inform you that all the recordings for the class are available in Google Classroom. So all of you are enrolled in Google Classroom in your respective sections like 5A, 5B, and 5C. If you click on Google Classroom of uh, CS 5A, 5B, or 5C, you'll see uh, there is a category called Recordings. Uh, whenever we have a session, uh, the uh, recording of the session will be uploaded here. It will be updated here. So if you want to look at the recordings, just click on recordings. Uh, and you will see a link here. Just click on the link. Once you click on the link, you will be redirected to YouTube uh, where you will get the, uh, where you will see all of our uh, uh, content. Okay. So once this class is over, you will have one more video uploaded here. Uh, so this is how this works. So uh, I think we'll uh, get started with the class now. So the strength is 56. So let's just start. So in the last class, we've seen about uh, various techniques you can use to think like a computer. So we started to think, we uh, concluded that thinking like a computer was important because if you wanted to program a computer, you need to first understand how the computer thinks. So the computer thinks in a very simple fashion. It thinks in. Your present presentation is not visible, sir. Uh, I think uh, you pinned someone else. So just uh, pin my screen. Uh, my screen name is Complab. All right. Uh, so find the username called Complab and. Ah, yes, uh, sir. I got it. Okay. So let's continue. So we're talking about thinking like a computer. So thinking like a computer is very important and uh, the various skills you need to acquire to think like a computer are uh, about uh, decomposition. So decomposition means uh, simply sp splitting up a big problem into small chunks. So like this Rubik's cube right here. If you want to solve this Rubik's cube, if you go about solving all sides at once, you'll fail. But if you solve at uh, like one side at a time, you'll probably succeed. So uh, split a problem into multiple different uh, small problems and uh, solve those sm smaller problems to solve the big one. So that is uh, about uh, decomposition. So this is one such technique uh, you can use to think like a computer. Next, uh, we saw about patterns. Uh, we, saw, we saw about uh, reusing code also. It is also uh, one form of decomposition where you can simply uh, reuse components. We've seen this. Next, we saw about pattern recognition. So whenever you have... Uh, Whenever you have any sort of problem, uh, you can see the solutions to some problems can be applied to others. So this is what we mean by pattern recognition. So uh, whenever you're doing some activity, you will see the steps to complete that activity be somewhat similar to other activities. So uh, uh, just by guessing, you can probably solve a problem. So that is what we mean by pattern recognition. So we use this pattern recognition uh, skill to solve the uh, questions on page number 12 and 13. I think everyone remembers. So we uh, looked at all the uh, different uh, geometrical shapes and then we tried to guess the next shape by using pattern recognition. So we use one numbers like one and two to guess the pattern. So we've done this activity already. Uh, I told you uh, like uh, this activity three was your homework. I hope all of you have completed. So those who have not completed, uh, please look at the answer right here. Those who have completed, well done. Those who have not, just take a look at the answer. So uh, here we go. So the pattern given here is something like E, W, and so on. So this looks like an E. This is a fork. This looks like an E. Uh, this is how the pattern goes. So we have this E facing the right. Then we have the E facing the top. Then we have the E facing the uh, uh, left here and then the bottom. So this pattern goes on. So we can uh, substitute the numbers uh, 1 for the regular E, 2 for the E facing top, 3 for the E facing the other way and 4 for the E facing the bottom. If we uh, uh, substitute these numbers instead of the symbols, you can see it generates a pattern 1, 2, 3, 4. So uh, by looking at this, we can guess the next uh, set of numbers uh, in this sequence. So the order goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So this way, we can solve this pattern. So this is the uh, last exercise we were doing. 
so uh, let's answer this question in the bottom here so the question is what will be the 12th pattern in this series so let me write down the numbers let me use a different color okay sir i did not understand sir your voice is breaking sir okay if my if my voice is breaking just disconnect and come back Okay, sir. Okay, disconnect and come back. It will probably get better. Okay, sir. Okay, who else has a voice problem? No one. Okay. So uh, this is the question here. They asked us to complete this pattern, and they was just asked us what is the twelfth pattern of this series. So I'm just solving it for you. This is what we uh, discuss would be some like homework. So let's just solve this. So here the sequence goes one two three four one two three four one two three four. So uh, the eleventh uh, sequence is going to be three. So three is this way, and next uh, we are going to get a four and four is this way. So here you can see uh, the twelfth pattern would be an E facing the bottom. Let me use a different color. Okay, here. So this is going to be the twelfth pattern. I hope everyone has solved this already. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Uh, so let's continue. Let's solve the next one. This is about pattern recognition. So let's start from one. Uh, so let me just uh, put numbers for each one of these symbols. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, this is a long problem. So uh, let's just look at the pattern here. So if we take the triangle with the dot in the center, if we take that uh, triangle with the dot in the center as one, uh, we can take the and if we take the triangle with the center to the with the dot to the right as two and the triangle with the dot to the left as three, we are going to generate this pattern. The pattern is going to be one two three one two three and one two three. So here, if we want to guess the uh, 14th digit, you can see that we don't have to draw the entire pattern. We can simply guess. Okay? Can anyone guess what the number is going to be for 14 without actually trying? Can anyone guess? Two. Okay, we have an answer two. Does everyone agree? Two. Okay, what is the actual number we are going to get here? What is the number in the sequence? Sir, five. Sir, six. Sir, six. No, Sir, the, the, sequence, the sequence goes up to one, two, three. We are going to keep repeating these three shapes again and again. The answer can be one, two, or three. So the question is, what do you think three. the fourth pattern will be? Three. Three, okay, one, okay. One of you said one, sorry, one of you said two, one of you said three. So one of you will say one next. So let me try. Okay, let's solve this. Sir, two is the actual answer, sir. Yes, two is the actual answer. Okay, so here you can see if I complete this pattern, I'm going to get two here. Okay, so the answer for the 14th one is two. So let me draw two. So this is two. So let me draw the answer here also. This is two. Okay, hold on, everyone. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Let's continue. Yes, sir. All right. So uh, here you have this third question here. Yeah. Uh, so this is also taking a lot of time, this explanation. So let me just uh, explain what's going on here, and you can figure out what the 15th uh, pattern is going to be. So let me explain the geometric shapes. So here we have a line. Uh, next, in the next, uh, next uh, sequence, you can see the line grew. So the line has grown one more uh, side. And in the third uh, slide, you can see 
the line is uh, the line is grouped one more side so the line keeps on growing sides so in the next one you can see the line has grown one more side and it's now become a square so after this you can see uh, the line has uh, this shape has grown one more line on the inside you can see the line is now growing on the inside so here you can probably guess as we keep going you can see there are going to be squares inside squares inside squares so this is a geometric pattern so we can't really assign numbers since uh, the same pattern is not repeating it's actually a geometric pattern you can uh, so here we cannot actually assign any proper numbers so uh, this is going to be the actual answer let me just zoom in so if the line keeps on growing in the center so uh, you'll see uh, once we run out of lines what's going to happen is a smaller square will be created in the center so this is what is going to happen in the center so just everyone you can just uh, guess and write what the 15th pattern is going to be you have to draw what are the next two symbols then you have to draw the 15th pattern in this uh, blank right here All right so let's go on to the next one uh, here also i'm just going to explain what the next two uh, blocks are going to be then you'll have to find out what the 13th pattern is going to be i think most of you would have written the answer in the blanks but you would have not written the answer for uh, the question at the bottom so uh, everyone please fill in the question in the bottom also so uh, let's look at this uh, let's look at this uh, pattern right here this is uh, somewhat interesting so here you can see uh, here you can see uh, there is a man here standing with this uh, uh, standing with his arms straight next you can see the man is bending his arms down then slanting then arms up then slanting the other way so here you can just notice these two positions are opposite and here you can notice this positions uh, bending sideways are also opposite so this by this is a repetitive pattern you can see a pattern is established uh, with these five uh, positions so this is the first position the starting position once he is in the start position he is going to put his arms down then to the sides arms up then to the other sides so this is a repetitive pattern so look at this so we can't assign numbers here also so just uh, look at the way the pattern is repeating so here you can see the start position is once again repeated next you can see the second position is also repeated next is the third position next is the fourth position and next is the fifth position you can see everything is getting repeated so from this you can probably guess what the uh, next uh, pattern is going to be so for the next position he's going to go back to start so let me just write start here so you can see uh, he's starting again so once he starts the next position is to put the arms down so that is what i've draw, drawn here so everyone you can uh, draw the same thing once again all right and uh, you'll have to write you'll have to draw the 13th pattern in the series right here okay gotcha. everyone will draw this just uh, draw the 13th pattern right here so if this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 Okay, eleven, twelve. Find the thirteenth pattern. Write it here. It's very simple. Just uh, look at the diagram. Which one? Three, sir. Okay, very good. Three. You can either draw three or you can draw eight. Both are the same. Draw three or eight right here in this box. Okay. Uh, so the same way. Uh, sir, eight can... also we can draw, sir. Yes, you can draw eight also. Three and eight are the same. You can see three and eight yes, are the same. Yes, you can draw eight also. Three and eight. It are the same. You can see three. Sorry, your voice is different. Okay. Thank okay. you, Sorry. sir. So uh, let's continue Thank on here. Ah, uh, uh, that's okay. So everyone, at least solve this last question right here. So this is also a geometric pattern. So you can see a pattern developing here. Uh, try to solve this on your own. Uh, if you are not able to solve it, let me show you the answer in the next class. we'll probably finish off all the topics here and uh, in the next class we'll do the exercises once we complete the exercises we can go to some uh, practical session okay so uh, let's continue today we're going to see the topic of abstraction all right so uh, let me explain with the help of the diagram here okay i think someone is unmuted 
sir your voice is not uh, so your uh, video is not clear okay let me present once again let me present once again just wait sir your presentation stopped sir okay i've stopped it i'm restarting okay sir it started sir okay i think it should be better now all right so uh, let's talk yes, about sir. okay okay everyone uh -huh. so let's talk about abstraction on second so abstraction simply means to hide non essential data all right listen once again abstraction simply means to hide non essential data all right so let's say someone is designing a car okay when they are designing a car so they are going to design an engine they are going to design wheels brakes speakers steering wheel seats uh, like wheel suspension the body they are going to design all sorts of things okay but when do you actually drive a car so what are you going to actually focus on you are only going to focus on the pedals and shifting gears and then turning the wheel everyone would have seen drivers and conductors okay drivers and conductors you would have rode in a bus you can see whenever the bus driver or uh, conductor whenever they are operating the bus you can see they only interact with the steering wheel the pedals and then the gear lever that's all so this is what the end user is going to do this is what the end user is going to use so what people do is they are going to hide away all of these components in a hidden location so the end user does not have to worry about them so that is what we mean by abstraction though whenever you are designing a car with all of these components generally when it is sent to the end user everything is hidden so the end user does not interfere with those uh, components so if the engine is wide in the open what will you do you will try to mess with the engine you will try to do something and uh, the car will not work as designed so whenever uh, you build something from thousands of parts uh, all of those non essential parts are hidden from you and only essential parts are shown to you so this is what happens in a program also so whenever you have a program right whenever you send instructions to the computer the code that you write or whatever text you write uh, that is in english is going to go through many steps it's going to go through many steps and then it will finally be converted to ones and zeros okay so this is what happens so any time you type in english it's the the english text is going to go through lots and lots of uh, uh, processes and then finally it will be turned into ones and zeros okay something like this so it will go on for many uh, many digits so you can see uh, on the right side you can see an example of uh, one such code you can see how this uh, code has multiple layers and uh, all of these multiple layers will be converted to ones and zeros finally so uh, this is all somewhat complicated so if you want the if my voice is breaking please disconnect and come back sorry your voice is breaking all right so uh, we were talking about abstraction so this is what i mean by abstraction so whenever you want uh, the user the end user to operate your program efficiently you need to hide non essential data like uh, take an example of robomind itself so behind robomind who are designed robomind has written all of this code like this he has written the code in plain english like this but when robomind is presented to you you don't see any of those codes okay you don't see any codes all you see are buttons and you can see some simple instructions so this is what you mean by abstraction yes my voice is sir your voice is not audible sir is it breaking sir your voice is breaking sir for, for me also that like only sir yes sir sir not breaking sir sir your voice is breaking sir no sir yes, sir Or your voice is clear only, sir. Right. Yes, your voice is very clear, sir. All right, children. Uh, I don't have a network problem on my side. Please check yes, your. Yes, sir. Your voice is very clear, sir. All right. So those yes, who have. Yes, sir. Your voice is very clear, sir. Okay. Let me just tell you again. Yes, If there is a problem with my voice, it is probably because of an internet problem on your side. So please check your internet signal. 
if you have only uh, one or two bars of signal reception you probably have a poor signal so sit in a place with better signal all right so okay let's continue we are talking about abstraction abstraction simply means to hide uh, things from the user so, uh, so robo this is the user interface of robo mind and here you can see in robo mind we don't see any complicated code we can see some big buttons we can see a big uh, screen here where the robot is moving but we do not see any complicated code we do not see any of this code here so this is what you mean by abstraction hiding uh, non-essential data from the user so why we are talking about abstraction is because sometime in the future you may also start creating programs okay you may also uh, start uh, start to create uh, many programs so when you are going to create all of those programs you also need to hide non-essential data from the user so the user will use it uh, uh, fruitfully okay so let me just show you one more example everyone has been to an atm i think everyone is familiar with an atm okay one second Uh, let me just show you an image. So I posted an image of an ATM. Is everyone familiar with this uh, ATM? Yes, sir, you can continue. Uh, uh, one second, ma'am. I'm just looking for an image. Okay. okay, I can't really find the image, so let me just explain this ATM example alone. So uh, why we need extra, uh, why we need to learn abstraction is because we need to make the uh, program or code as easy as possible for the end user. So let's say in the future you become uh, a programmer for a bank. So the bank will ask you ask you to uh, create a code for an ATM machine. So what will you do? You'll have to uh, create the interface for the ATM. Okay. So look at this. So here we have an ATM and here you can see uh, they're asking some very simple questions like uh, what is your, uh, the amount to be uh, uh, taken out. You can see the number here and you can see some big buttons. So this is what you mean by good example of abstraction. Sir, the screen is not visible to me, sir. Okay, click on my name. Yes, sir. Click on my name. You will see my name as Complab. Click on my name and pin my name. You can see there is a name called Complab. Click on Complab and uh, pin it. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, it's only C it's showing, sir. It is Complab. So you can see C O M P L A B. That is my name. So I'm uh, speaking and I'm presenting. So click on my presentation. You can see something like Complab followed by presentation in brackets uh, just pin the same okay all right so let's continue so we are talking about a good examples of abstractions here you can see the atm uh, program it has a very simple interface so it is very easy let's say we have one more atm let me get a different color let's say that atm says uh, enter amount here okay and let's say the box is all the way over here and here they have uh, some advertisements like uh, we advertise something like this and let's say they have terms and conditions right here they have some several lines and uh, let's say uh, uh, cash deposit button is here cash uh, withdrawal button is here okay let's say there is one more interface where there is lots of confusion where you put all the options available to the atm in one screen so this will cause lots of lots and lots of confusion for the user okay i think uh, let me just get rid of this uh, here okay let's say we have one more menu where uh, we have put all the options in one single screen 
okay so this will cause lots and lots of confusion for the person who's actually using it if you have lots and lots of buttons if you put every single function of an atm software in one go the user will get confused so what you need to do is you need to hide all non essential features and you need to put them in a different place okay so you need to put only essential features whenever you are designing software so that is why we are learning about abstraction right now okay when you start designing software in the future you need to make sure you are hiding everything that is non essential to the user in a different place so that is what we call as a good program okay so uh, i think we have covered uh, abstraction so here you have some examples of abstraction so when you are going to breaking sir so uh, if my voice is breaking it is probably no, because sir. of a poor signal yes, sir. no sir no sir your voice is clear only sir and that's what i'm trying to tell you if my voice is breaking it's probably an issue on your side so please check yes, your internet connectivity so let's continue here we have some general examples of abstraction in real life so uh, yes, if you all right let's continue so i'm explaining the uh, topic given on page number 15 everyone you can take a look so uh, some general examples of abstraction so let's say you're baking a cake okay if you're baking a cake uh, you know about the ingredients of the cake okay uh, like we don't but we don't know where the ingredients come from or how to make the ingredients we know how to make a cake with ingredients but we don't know where those ingredients come from or we don't know the other details of how to make the ingredients themselves so this is what you uh, mean by general example of abstraction right uh, so we have some uh, specific patterns here you can also take a look so let me just uh, go forward uh, next we'll take uh, one more important skill uh, you need to learn to become a good programmer the next skill you need to learn is about uh, uh next skill you need to learn is about algorithms let's come back to models later we need to learn algorithms first so next skill you need to learn is about algorithm an algorithm is simply uh, step by step instructions written down on paper okay so you can see the definition right here an algorithm is simply a plan and a set, a set of step by step instructions to solve a problem so any time you have a problem instead of simply approaching it mentally if you write down the steps in a neat and efficient manner you will be able to solve all sorts of problems okay you can apply algorithms to all sorts of uh, problems even in real life all right let's say you have a problem that you solved but you are not sure how to solve it you can use an algorithm to keep track of the problem and you can solve it easily all right so if you have a complicated problem like uh, cooking uh, maybe some uh, some complicated dish like soup okay let's say your mother ask you to make a soup she is given you instructions but uh, uh, the instructions are not clear uh, you know some of the instructions but you don't know some if you if you are in that situation you can always make an algorithm okay so the algorithm will give you detailed instructions on what to do for each step so anyone reading the algorithm can solve the problem easily so uh, let me give you a simple algorithm for uh, daily life okay uh, so uh, let me not give you an example complicated example like soup let me give you an example like uh, making hot water okay it's just a simple uh, example okay uh, someone else is presenting do not present let me just finish this then you can ask your questions okay so let me just write down a simple uh, algorithm here addition yes you are yeah. presenting can you stop presenting so your screen is not visible for me someone else is presenting who is presenting sir sir it is okay okay the others do not present sir yes tell your 
Okay, if my voice is breaking, it's probably because of a network issue on your side. Okay, just uh, sit in a place with uh, proper signal. Okay. So, uh, let's say we want to make hot water. Let's say we want to explain the steps to make hot water to another person. So, what will you do? You'll write down all the uh, steps in detail. Instead of simply telling them, uh, put the uh, bowl on uh, the gas stove and uh, fill water, you'll say detailed instructions. That is what we mean by algorithm. So, your algorithm will have detailed instructions. It'll take, it'll, this, this is a sample algorithm. So, just take a look. Okay. All right. So uh, here I've written a small algorithm. So to me, if you want to make hot water, these are the steps you're going to follow. So all of you know how to make hot water, but these are just the steps broken down. So uh, you can just see how the algorithm works. So if you have some sort of a complicated problem, you can follow the same uh, sort of procedure where you can break down all the individual steps and you can write it down. If you do so, you can, you can actually solve any sort of problem you have. Uh, it can be even mathematical or uh, other uh, technical problems. Yeah. All right. Is everyone clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so the next is about creating a model. So a model is basically uh, it's basically a tool for testing. Okay. So whenever you uh, so you would have learned in science also. Whenever you learn a concept in science, you'll be learning based on a model. So the model is like a, a representation. So it uh, takes our algorithm and gives it shape. So that is what you call by a model. So in science, you may have some several uh, scientific models. So you may understand from that. So let's not go into too much detail. Just understand a model is simply uh, a design or a shape given to our algorithm. OK, so let's continue. So here we have a sample program. Uh, let me not actually explain it because uh, you don't have any programming exposure beforehand. Let's ignore this. Let's go uh, to flowchart right here. So uh, a flowchart is simply a diagram that uh, represents all the steps detailed in the uh, algorithm neatly. So here in our algorithm, we've detailed all the steps needed to, uh, to make hot water. Okay, but uh, you can see all of these steps are written in English and uh, they're all over the place. You can see some sentences here, some numbers here and so on. If you want to simplify this uh, algorithm further, we can use something called as a flow chart. In the flow chart, we'll be uh, describing all the actions that we're performing using symbols. You can see some symbols here like start, stop. Uh, you can see a rectangle here. Uh, that uh, depicts a process. You can see a diamond shape here that depicts a decision. You can see uh, one more uh, uh, design here that says input or output. You can see whatever problem you have, you can uh, uh, describe the ways to solve that problem using an algorithm. And that algorithm can be uh, put out graphically by using a flow chart. So uh, this may be somewhat uh, vague to you or this may seem like it has no application to you, but you'll get the use or you'll understand the use of these tools when you start programming. All right. So when you start programming, you'll have a complicated goal that you have to achieve. So in order to achieve that goal, you'll have to take uh, many, many attempts or you'll have to uh, draw out your entire plan. So whenever you are uh, trying to plan out things, you can use these tools like algorithms and flowcharts. Okay? So this is just the model here. 
so here we have a flow chart to make coffee so if you have a kettle and uh, if you uh, and if you want to make coffee you can follow the steps given here even if uh, you even if you have no idea how to make coffee if you follow this uh, flow chart you'll be able to make coffee because the flow chart is going to give you detailed instructions on what to do for every single step all right uh, so uh, that's that so it's almost time so let me just explain how this flow chart works let's assume none of you make uh, none of you know how to make coffee uh, so let's me just let's just go with that assumption and let me explain how this flow chart works so if you have no idea how to make coffee you're going to look at this flow chart so once you look at the flow chart you'll see the first step is initiation so by initiation you're just going to get a, a, a bowl to make coffee so you'll get a pot to make coffee so once you get the uh, coffee so once you get the pot uh, you have a question in the flow chart it, it's asking does it contain a liter of water so here you can uh, decide so here you have to make a decision does the kettle have water or not so if the pot has no water you'll go you'll say no so if you say no you can see instructions on what to do so if you say no uh, it, the uh, flow chart is asking you to fill the kettle with 1 liter of water so uh, you let's say you go to the water tap and let's say you fill it and then you'll come back to the same step so now uh, the flow chart is asking you does the kettle contain liter of water now you'll say yes because it just filled it so if you say yes you know the direction to go if you say no you know the direction to go so this is a flow chart uh, it's uh, written by someone else so anyone that, is, that does not know the steps to follow solve a problem can refer to this flow chart uh, to solve it okay so let's continue uh, here we have more steps so let me not explain all the steps so here you can just take a look you can take a look you can see uh, the flow chart details all the steps to perform to make uh, coffee right here there are other examples given in your book you can take a look at those examples also so i've been talking for something like 45 minutes you know uh, this entire chapter is completely theory uh, but we have no other option we have to learn all of this theory so though this may sound boring to you it may uh, come in handy when you are in higher classes so in higher classes you may have to solve or write problems during that time this will be very useful to you uh, we'll see the use of these uh, we'll see the use of all of these uh, tools in upcoming chapters so once we complete this chapter uh, there are some more topics once we complete the chapter we'll write our activity and from then on we'll be working with robo mind once we go to robo mind uh, the amount of theory you will have will be very less you will have to do more practical problems so uh, just bear with me for the next few sessions we are going to do only theory for the next few sessions okay so let me stop there so do you have any questions you want to ask regarding flow charts and other uh, computational techniques other uh, techniques to think computationally anyone no sir no sir okay everyone will say no no sir no sir no sir all right then so uh, all of you can actually go to google classroom and post your attendance sir 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 bye sir Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. Thank you, 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 sir. B